just one to consider who the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was. Who was he? And the best place to be able to understand who he was is not in any book but other than the Quran. We also know that he was a human being. That he was, he was not an angel. And he was not beyond the angels. But he was a human being who, in a sense, was so that in him we can see that we are trying to emulate somebody who is just like us. Somebody who bleeds like us. Somebody who thinks like us. Somebody who acts like us. Somebody who becomes in need of sleep. Who is in need of food. Who is in need of drink. Who is in need of love who can go through all sorts of psychological states, states of despair, states of anxiety, states of anguish, states of happiness. And these were all states that the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa went through when his children died, when his son, when his children died, the young boys died. He cried. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa cried, showing the human emotion. He knew that the child was being returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was his time to leave this world. But he cried, showing that he was just like us. He felt something within him. And he was, there were also times when he was happy, times when he was glad, times when he was ecstatic, times when he would be laughing continuously with his companions. He would be continuously smiling with those around him. So he was a human being. And he commands the obedience. And this is important for us to consider. Especially as, some, as people who want to be able to influence others. You see, as Muslims, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him a khalifa. He has made us as people as ibadullah, as people who ought to be worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But, but we are also khulafa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made us his representatives here, his ambassadors on this earth. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his most beloved to this world. But the most beloved who came to this world was also the most beloved who had to sacrifice the most. Sacrifice with his own teeth, with his own limbs, with his own, with his own blood. He had to sacrifice to be able to spread the message, to be able to live his life as a true Muslim. And this is something we must recognize. So he trusts and he, and, and he serves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all that he did. Throughout his life, before the call to prophethood, before the call to prophethood, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was continuously guiding him. He had not been called to prophethood yet. It took 40 years for that to happen. But before that period, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hand was with him. Allah was guiding him. Somebody who was independent and he was gainfully employed and he was successful at it. And even though he got married to somebody who was well off, but he also ensured that he played his part. He did not say, well, look, you know, I've gotten married into a wealthy family now, so you know what I'm going to do? I don't need to work again. I can live off her. She has so much wealth, perhaps from a family, from businesses. I can live off her. I don't need to do anything else. I can live off her, perhaps take social security as well. But this was not the case. For Rasulullah he looked at becoming somebody who was able to stand up for himself, stand up for his family. So they can see the contribution that he was making towards the establishment of, or, or towards their own um, success, inshallah.